people hear that, uh, you know, oh, maybe he's prepared for what has been happening is no one has been ever prepared, even if you're inside the discipline of public health emergencies. It's, it's been quite a, a journey for all of us and a learning for all of us as we move in this response. Um, thank you very much. Um, I will try my best to just set the scene. Uh, I think a, a keynote, calling it a keynote is too formal. Um, but uh, le let me just narrate it as, as best as I can. Where are we right now? Where are we? Uh, and why is this discussion important? I think at this point, we are at the crucial time of the pandemic. Uh, cases are plateauing in India after a, a quick dip, a quick, uh, a very rapid decline of cases from a devastating second wave. And COVID vaccine, uh, vaccination is scaling where possible in different states as best as possible, depending on the availability of vaccines. Uh, it's a point of uncertainty because cases are also surging elsewhere in the world. Um, when cases are surging, we also know that there is a possibility of another variant happening. There are variants dominating and maybe new appearing. Right now it's Delta, there is, there is discussion and emergence of Lambda. Uh, it's a point of uncertainty on how this pandemic will evolve. but. I think it's what we're seeing is intensive preparedness in all states in India. All countries are preparing for a possible third wave. What that third wave will look like is very difficult to, to model or even predict. Some epidemiologists have already said that the truth of the matter is that we don't know. Uh, some are still battling, even in, in India, some states are still battling the uh, that second wave is still spreading. And then the biggest question is, what is the new normal as we proceed to reopen businesses, social services, schools? This is the question in everyone's mind. We cannot keep hiding from the rest of the world and keep stopping uh, livelihoods, uh, education, businesses. But I think what's important for us to think about and as an emergency person, and I've seen this so, so many times happening, is that this challenge is an opportunity. In all this, health has never had this spotlight and priority or an investment. Every head of state is talking about improving health, improving health services, improving health of the people. Uh, that, the idea being COVID-19 response as a launch pad for having ideas for better health. This is how we should also look at it as a lens. And this is, I guess, the, the, the point of these webinars, of these, uh, of these summits, e-summits. This emergency provided a space and resources to leverage the whole of society and government approach. Um, and that we've seen in all countries. They, they, they have different ways of doing it, but uh, this response or these responses wouldn't have happened without such an approach. Uh, and such ways of working need not be exclusive to the pandemic response. I hope that's, that's the biggest learning. If there is cooperation across sectors for a response, there should be the same cooperation across sectors for preparedness, for strengthening health systems, for improving the health workforce, for improving quality of healthcare services, for improving uh, uh, primary health care, making systems resilient under the frame of universal health coverage, which includes the health workforce that is well prepared, supported, protected, uh, health services in their reach and coverage, and of course, quality, health information that uh, spurs action. What, does, what do these all look like? And health policy that is flexible and agile. We've seen that in this response, that age-old uh, policies and regulations for difficult procurement suddenly disappeared and it's possible. Why not bring that to preparedness? Why not bring that to regular work? There should be no stockouts of essential medicines or essential vaccines. These together form the base of a resilience uh, for, for health and health systems. And I think if there is any country in the world also that's well positioned for UHC and a resilient health system, it is India. Uh, 
with the Ishman Bharat PMJ, operationalized through health and wellness centers. Ambitious goals, but really intense work has been happening. It's more than 50% now of the 150,000 health and wellness centers have, have been set up. And the amount of funding that is being leveraged for health, for PMASBY, as well as with the Jaljivan mission, uh, Urban Swatch Bharat mission 2.0, it's, it's, there are health outcomes that need to be leveraged. Uh, so I think the ask for, for the sector or the health sector or sectors is to reimagine. This is why this, uh, the, the forum is so well uh, uh, enti entitled and captured by that word, reimagining public health. And many of you have seen me speak even last year as, as the cases went down, I would always say reimagine because a rethink is not enough. Looking at lessons from the pandemic requires an insightful look back from how health professionals are educated. Are health professionals, is there a subject about pandemic preparedness response uh, in, in, in any of the, uh, in any of our uh, health schools, medical schools, nursing schools, allied medical professions, to how they are employed and served and protected in the health system. The other is an efficiency in health financing. Why were some of these investments that were expected to perform were not happening? Existing policies that can be improved and changed and amended. Uh, how do we leverage technology and R&D without forgetting people? Sometimes it's all about uh, when we say communicate now, it's social media, etc. But there are people that are not reached or use such technologies. Um, how does technology leverage for reaching the unreached? We need to find new solutions and rebuilding back differently a resilient health system. Now, the, the thing is, we may already have solutions or platform for solutions that just need scaling up and need leveraging. You know, it's a, there is a national digital health mission. COWIN is, is one of the biggest uh, e-solutions for vaccination, uh, registration. It's looking like a one-stop shop for, for, for uh, vaccination for, for the pandemic. I can also tell you that the Integrated Health Information Platform, which is a platform for various surveillance uh, programs for integrated disease surveillance, malaria, uh, health management information systems are, is already in place. Uh, Policy for the health workforce, a, a, why don't we think of a cadre for public health and emergencies, surveillance officers per district, I think there is a plan for that. But more so, how do we scale the skills of uh, ASHAs uh, and, and basic primary healthcare workers to be able to manage emergencies. And I'm talking emergencies across the board. It's not just a big outbreak. It may be floods, which keep happening. Even that, that, that needs some, some form of, of retooling. Uh, health services, how do we strengthen uh, COVID facilities and create a very efficient referral plan that, that can scale up for an emergency, but works very well uh, during uh, regular, regular times. Telemedicine, there's Isan Jibni already. So how do then, what are, what are the important parameters that you need for telemedicine? Is it uh, regulatory? Is it setting standards? Uh, from, from decades ago, there had to be standards for the kind of images that would be sent uh, for diagnosis, for opinion, uh, how, how well do you refer from telemedicine? You might miss something in your history, et cetera. You may need to see the patient face to face. When does that happen? Protocols will have to be evolved, but the platform is there. Environmental surveillance, that's also another new big thing uh, with it just being done for polio, but you can do it also for COVID. Wastewater is sampled to, to pick up uh, where diseases are clustering and prevent an outbreak. And of course, India is the pharmacy of the world. How do you leverage vaccine development, manufacturing and delivery? It's, it's happening for COVID, it can happen for other diseases. 
And in all this, maybe there are three words again to think about. It is sustain what has been achieved. You can't pull back. So right now we're all catching up for routine immunization because of the slowdown in, in, in the past waves of COVID. But how do you sustain it again? What do you accelerate? Accelerate the uh, prevention and control of non-communicable diseases. Uh, it is a com comorbid, it is, is it a driver of, of severity for COVID. Uh, it, is a, it, it is something that we need to accelerate and improve. And in all this, innovate. So how do you reach out to the community? How do you engage the public to uh, be responsible for health? There's so much uh, blaming in terms of the response, et cetera, but there are people who have not worn their masks. They, there are people who have gathered, set up their own uh, in parties, weddings, et cetera. It, that was a, a main driver of gathering of people is a main driver for this um, pandemic. Now, how do we actually proceed? Because reimagine we can sit down and think and, 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 and ideate. But one big thing, one re realization that the pandemic has highlighted is that we need to realign. That's another R so that we are well prepared or aligned to each other. Health systems, transport, supply chains, emergency coordination. You, the, those were systems that were stretched quickly and in many ways its linkages were broken quite early. As each system invests to be resilient, so it's not just health that needs to be resilient to, a, to an emergency, but all the other systems. We need to realign with other systems so that it works well with each other. How do urban systems create better health? What would be standards for uh, setting up homes, uh, water, sewage systems, et cetera? How can R&D be accelerated to solve old public health problems? Can you imagine the number of candidate vaccines for COVID and still there is, be, there is research still being done for TB and uh, there is, uh, well, very minimal uh, investment in um, uh, investing in a vaccine for, let's say, uh, HIV. Uh, how can supply chains be streamlined so that it all will always have a plan B, a, system, a contingency B, C, D? How do we implement a One Health approach? Isn't that such a huge problem? These diseases, uh, diseases that are emerging are always zoonotic. How, how do you do uh, systems such as wildlife, agriculture, animal industry, ex exchange information with the health um, sector. In fact, even in antimicrobial resistance, this, this, is, this remains a challenge. How do you implement the One Health approach? We need to all realign and, and, and see, and together with that, also foresee and prevent the next pandemic. I think I will end soon. Uh, the last is a reset. What, what does a reset mean? To reset, everyone needs to come together. We need to meet, whether virtual or face-to-face, -face, and address these issues uh, for, for the benefit of, of people. So that there's also, it's, it's sometimes uh, thinking of responses, we forget uh, involving populations, people themselves. We're forgetting the public in public health. They are part of preparedness, they are part of response because uh, a resilient health system will only succeed if, it's, if society is resilient. So I think I will end there. It's time to reimagine, realign, and reset. So I think I'll, I'll uh, these are like pos uh, posits or uh, possible topics that we can keep continuing to discuss by, by the panel and specifics uh, of, of what can be, uh, will be further discussed. So thank you very much for the opportunity.